very warm welcome to all our ICTS viewers. Uh, I hope you all are doing good and you all are having a nice day. Today we have a really special guest with us, Manthi Shah. She is an entrepreneur and she also owns, uh, owns and runs a sustainable and eco-friendly business. So we all know how sustainability is important, not only for our environment, but also for our health. So we are going to talk to Manthi about her journey about her ups and downs, how she, how she started her journey. So first of all, Mansi, welcome. And hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me here. Okay, so uh, how, how was your day going? Day is going good. I was excited to, you know, I was looking forward to meeting and talking to you. So yes. Okay, so, uh, first of all, thank you so much for taking time to be here with us and give us a few minutes out of your busy schedule. So uh, first of all, uh, why don't you tell our uh, audience about yourself, a little about yourself? Okay, I, like we all know, I'm Mansi Shah. I'm based, I'm born and brought up in Mumbai. I've recently moved to another city. So trying to, you know, um, understand how this city works and all. Yeah, and uh, I have, I've been following a low waste lifestyle now more than seven years. Yeah, where I've been composting my own, like, you know, food or the the wet waste and the, you know, the everyday food that we cook and, you know, all the waste we get out, I compost that. I segregate my, you know, plastic waste if that's coming in the house. Uh, I'm doing these little, little things, you know, I carry my reusables. I make sure that I don't, you know, create more waste as I'm living on this planet. So, yeah, that's all about me. I love animals, you know, I... Uh, I come across so many rescues, you know, I like looking after. And yes, I like to travel locally more because I want to explore how beautiful our country is. And obviously, I want to travel outside too. And yes, that's all about me. Okay. So, uh, I have this question. How did you come up with this idea of, you know, low waste gifting? Uh, so, the thing was that every year, like, you know, my family having like working in the printing industry and all they have had so many customers clients and all the family we used to keep getting gifts you know like be it any occasion like ganpati diwali you know even sometimes uh, during makar sankranti you know you would get gifts and everything so there was a point where i was at home you know like taking a break from my work and everything and i was just back home and i was noticing that all these gifts are coming in you know before ganpati and there was so much, you know, plastic wrapping around it, you know, like this food, which is, you know, cling, uh, cling wrapped. I understand that food, maybe you have to, but things like, you know, gifts or if somebody is giving you like, you know, um, even items at wedding okay. giveaways. Yeah, like everything is packaged. So, uh, you know, not consciously, we don't even think about what we're going to do after that. And so many times, even gifts, you know, we have like two or three of the same thing at home, you know. We sometimes have to just give out gifts for the sake of giving. And the gifting culture can be so because you want to stand out, you know, between your family, society, friends and all. So you have to give the best gift, you know. But in that process, we don't realize how much waste we create. And that was one of the tipping points for me. I'm like, what is this? You know, it's not even mindful gifting, you know, at some point. First of all, packaging is a big problem. Yeah. And then the gifting itself... Yeah, you were saying? Yeah, I'm saying packaging and the gifting items was like a big problem, which made me realize that, no, I want to do something which is more thoughtful. You know, that the person should remember that gift for like a very long time. You know, even if not forever. But yes, that was the idea. So, uh, that was like, it gave you the initial idea. Yes. Yeah, okay. I feel like uh, people wanting to, you know, stand up to the social convention standard is one of the major cause, you know, why uh, we are in this mess, you know, currently trying yeah. to do like things by going over the top, like you uh, said yeah. with the tapping paper and all. Okay. So uh, I think your degree had a lot to do with uh, what you're doing right now. So do you, like, how do you think it pushed you in this direction? Uh, so my education was in biotech and then I went on to do forensic biotech. 
so i wouldn't say completely it helped me but yes all the knowledge about the science is you know about what what we create at give green like if if it's personal care products you know there's a lot of thought going in because we like we say chemical free and all of that but everything is a chemical it's just you know what are harmful and what are not harmful for your body so that has you know the science is behind you know what i've studied has helped me understand the products that i you know make so it helps me with all the research over there and also i feel education never goes away so now i know you know what like i understand genetically modified organisms better because i've studied about it you know diseases immunology and all of that so that's helped me you know understand the greener side of this like there are two different sides and now i've understood both somewhat and there's so much more to learn okay, okay. so uh, when i first came across your profile and i was going through your social media because i have this curiosity of you know you have to uh, you get a lot about uh, the person from the pictures and how, what they're posting on social media alone and your profile uh, like it felt quite interesting i it, i found it quite interesting and i came across this uh, one uh, sentence one word like that which was green gifting now uh, what you said earlier about you know you gave an example of wrapping paper and how we are just using without even thinking of the consequences but i found it quite interesting because i heard about it for the first time like really uh so can you explain about uh, like green gifting and explain uh, like in uh, detail like what is green gifting like in detail okay so basically green gifting is not only limited to buying something eco friendly or sustainable for a gift green gifting also means regifting something you have at home which you've never used and could be useful to the person you're passing it on to that is also you know a way of being sustainable when you want to gift something so we always think that green gifting is you know buying something new you know but that's also not the case it's about how you're being mindful okay if you have a plant at home you've grown it and now you have two three of the same plants you can actually take one of them and pass it on to somebody as a gift that is also you know an eco friendly sustainable or how we name it green gifting to do it because that's a thought behind it right and what we do is a lot of times if you want to give out gifts to people then we just give you options and alternatives in the in the sustainable and the eco friendly you know niche so yeah green gifting like doesn't like even on the website like even on the page we try and not promote that you also have to like keep giving and keep buying new things you know like and regifting now is picking up slowly slowly but uh earlier times you know people were like okay i have three of the same set of mugs you know like people would gift and you can actually wrap it and pass it on it's nothing to be ashamed of you know that is also a way of being sustainable when it comes to gifting so yeah yeah people have kind of made it like like uh, like this is the thing to be ashamed of regifting yeah. like i don't find any problem with it like if you yeah. are not going to use it instead of it just being there in your house at some corner you can just regift it so yeah and if yeah. somebody will use it you know instead of just yeah. like just because you are ashamed of something doesn't mean so nobody can use that absolutely good to use item you know so people need to get out of that thought process thought process it just start with the thought process i feel like so uh, what do you remember your first gift like that you received which uh, like a green gift that you received or you gave it to someone else do you remember which was it uh i the first i received was actually from my mother like she grew a plant and it had grown really beautiful Okay. and then you know like it had grown big and nice and healthy and she was like okay now you look after it now it's yours you know okay. because even being a plant parent is a tough job i think yeah i you know? saw that you yeah. plant parent yeah like sometimes i also kill my plants but i'm just trying to hang in there you know it's okay. a lot of dedication and work and i think one uh, one more nice gift i would think of as a good thoughtful gift was a book i got from a friend and actually it was passed on by many people who had read it okay. and i was like 10th reader but that was also important you know because it was not going into the landfill and somebody was passing on that legacy of reading that book so i think that was also a very thoughtful gift but actually, yeah i i don't i yeah. i don't remember anyone specifically giving me a green gift because when we started in 2016 there were not many companies also actually doing alternatives okay. to gifting you know so i would just gift myself maybe a bamboo brush i'm like okay i'll just gift it to myself 
<laughs> yeah, giving yourself is also important. Yes, obviously, self love is the best form of love yeah. that you can show to yourself. So, uh, like, what was the uh, you know? I I feel like I've seen a lot of uh, secondhand uh, bookshops, and it actually makes me kind of happy that people are moving more towards the you know secondhand stuff, not thinking oh it's secondhand, let's not use it or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it kind of makes me happy seeing a lot of secondhand shops, and even now there's thrifting going on. Uh, so it kind of makes me really happy. Yeah, and I mean, we would do it from like you know, we would borrow our sister's clothes, our brother's shirts, or even like our mother's. We've been doing it right from the childhood, right? So by childhood, right? Yeah. It. Exactly, okay. it's been in us, in our roots, since so long. But now it's like now when we say it's second hand, you all are like, oh, you're wearing second hand. But we've always yeah, been. Like, yeah, it's okay. going on since years. It's years. Yeah, like we've been doing it for years in our homes, and we don't even realize it. We just need to spread awareness about it. I feel like yeah. more aware. More awareness. Okay. I also came across your store. You have a variety of products lined up, which I'm definitely going to buy later on, from toothbrush to bags and whatnot. So, do you have any future plans for any upcoming product? Like, uh, so right now we're working on collaborating with other brands. You know, okay. who can bring items which we don't have. You know, because there's okay. not everything I can do alone. You know. So I think collaboration brings more power, more awareness. You know, it brings more people together in the community also. So I'm, you know, we are planning to bring in like shampoo bars from other brands. Okay. You know, uh, some nice natural sweeteners from other brands. You know, personal care items which we don't make, which I don't make myself. That also we're going to introduce, and some more upcycled products because yeah. So we're looking at more of that in the future, the coming months. So I know it's a bit of a tough question, but what's your favorite product out of like your own product? What is the one pro- like thing that you use the most and you love the most? Okay, that's a tough one. Uh, the tooth powder is something I use every okay. day. Like that's my staple. Okay, the tooth powder that uh, we make, and also the lotion bar. Uh, it's actually like a lotion in a bar form. and it's really okay. small so it's very handy like it's always in my fanny pack or it's yeah like i just every time i'm feeling that okay something has just feeling dry i can just rub it i think those are my two favorites that's actually innovative i haven't heard of it before yeah a lot of people confuse it for soap bars then we have to explain okay. to them nahi it's not a soap it's a lotion you know they think oh sabun hai but then 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 that's how the conversation starts that no it's actually a lotion in a bar okay. form Yeah, and my winter favorite is the body butter. We all literally like have our individual bottles at home because everyone's fighting for it. So that's okay. that's something I love. Yeah. Okay. So where is your headquarter at? Like your main office from where all these things happen? Is it in Mumbai? Okay. Ah uh, no, like starting from this month, it's going to be in Surat now because I have moved to Surat. So we're going to be, yeah, you know, restarting. Like from okay. Surat now, a new city. So it's kind of like a yeah, friend, like a franchise sort of. Like, are you expanding or are you just shifting there? No, I've just moved, so I've moved the business with me. Okay. You know, okay. and now wherever I am, the business is there. You know, so in Bombay, obviously, we have family and we have a lot of customer base. So you know, we uh like we keep going to and fro, so I can like deliver there. But yeah, this is going to be the new headquarters now. We have like a new place. Yes. So, uh, what are your future plans with this venture of yours? You know, this business of yours. Uh, like, what uh, have you, what do you have in mind? What do you hope to achieve? So, my future plans are. Yeah, I think there is. Uh, first, I'm gonna like start streamlining. Uh, you know, all the upcycle products that we have. the ones which are actually doing well and are getting a good response and are actually you know usable because i don't want to make things you know just for the sake of making it so i think i'm going to streamline that and i want to like start building a community in surat you know we already have a community started by a very dear friend in mumbai where all the zero waste low waste enthusiasts meet talk about our problems you know our family is not being supportive about our low waste lifestyle or composting and all of that so i want to 
build the community in the new city now and try and get more like minded people to work towards it because i think in the city when you do it you can like if i'm meeting 10 new people then 10 new people are going to do that in their houses and then you know it, that's how it spreads so that's my future plan more people and that's how it's going yes. to spread yeah so i think that's my future thing to build a community because the company is already been built now it's been many years okay. so now that's the plan so if i have to ask you where do you see yourself in coming 5 years so i guess you answer a fully expanded you know uh venture yeah and i don't want to see a lot of people like like you said 5 years people ask me like why don't you like you know increase the scale and make it large but th- that's the thing i don't want to make it like a factory based production house where again that's the thing right we're promoting more consumerism you know more and more we're forcing more and more people to buy it so maybe even in the next coming 5 years maybe even if i'm making smaller batches then i'm going to try and maintain that yeah maybe i'll make more of the smaller batches but i'm going to still try and make it more like personalized handmade you know and yeah keep it like that i think that's that's the beauty of it so yeah even though i expand i think that's one part which is going to be there like about uh, you talked about you know sometimes a uh, few people like i feel like a lot of people especially in india faces where parents are are not supportive or you get you know silent under the uh, you know under the thought that or oh, what might others think or usually it's the parents who say uh, what might other thing what are you doing you're doing nothing because it was very difficult at first i feel to uh, explain the concept of expanding through social media and working from home and also were your parents supportive like when you started this venture or did, you, did they wanted you to do something else or they were always uh, supportive uh, so my main core team when give green started was my dad my mother my sister okay. and my brother like okay. that's the core team like the first order order we got okay. of like soil and seed modaks like as a family we were making it together okay. you know okay. yeah because they they saw like how inclined i was you know i wanted to do okay. something so yeah they were very supportive then they helped me with the you know how the costing works and how business works because i've been like a science nerd always sitting in a lab you know okay. doing all my experiments so yeah that was like actually they helped me understand like how actually you know a venture works you know what all do you need you need money to run it you know you need to buy things there's raw materials and you know yeah doing things out of passion and then doing things properly in a right channel i think my family was the biggest supporter you know giving me ideas inputs okay i feel like if you have support from your family then that's it you don't that's it then else. yeah then your, your boat is going to sail really smoothly yeah i uh, that's the yeah. best thing so uh, yeah and then once i got married like my my, okay. my mother in law does the same thing like she okay. actually teaches like a batch of 200 people composting at once like kitchen gardening composting okay. that's so nice so yeah so we like we were so happy to connect you know i was like yeah. because yeah you're skeptical right you're going to a new family and how are oh, they going to yeah. perceive you but yeah this was like cherry on top so yeah, yeah i think it was like actually i've been lucky there both the families have been like my yeah it's just it's killer. just like a movie yeah you know like because i have seen a lot of my friends who are into this you know field they actually don't have the support you know mm-hmm. they really like it's the friends who help them a lot of times so actually if your family helps you it's just so much easier there's so much less stress and you know other things yeah. you already have a lot of things to worry about and that just adds on so, yeah being an architecture student myself we have studied sustainable right from our first year and seeing someone who is uh, actually doing something about it uh, in real it's really like hats off to you because all of us want to do something because a very few take the that first step so hats off to you okay so uh, i have a really you know interesting question for you when i first came across your profile and saw uh, you have also listed some products on your profile too and the first question that struck me was how do you attract this gen z or like what has been your strategy 
in attracting this gen z this generation towards this you know how are like how are you doing that oh i'm actually not been very successful at that because getting okay. the gen z to do like things is i think you know i cannot generalize that the entire gen z doesn't care about sustainability there are a lot of you know our clients which are very young you know they're willing to learn and they'll like have so many questions you know how do i do this and where can i get this i want to segregate my waste can you help me and that that is amazing you know but there is also a big chunk who does not think Enjoy. about yeah the the environment the sustainability and also how their future depends on it because now like now today sitting like you know in our respective cities we we are facing the effects of climate change right so i think the faster they understand it the better for them you know so we try to like i try to share stories about how you can be like sustainable at home like easy easy things like easy steps so even if five gen z you know folks see it i think even if two follow it will be like a win win you know yeah but i need yeah. to work on you know work on making nice reels and stuff for the gen z you know <laughs> yeah they are like, working they are on the top of the game right now when it comes to making you know reels i think we've become buddha <laughs> okay so you're like still working uh, yeah still working to get there yes okay but i feel like a lot of uh, you know even if i have to take me also before i started studying about it i have this whole subject uh, on green building uh, this semester and before that as i told you i have been studying it right from my first year and before that unknowingly you know you said earlier that uh, gen there are some some portion which don't really care about environment it's i feel like it's more about not knowing what's happening not knowing. Yes. yeah it's more yes. about it's they don't know like they like you so want to do things. it you just yeah. don't know what what to do and how to do it yeah it's like yeah. lack of knowledge i feel like if they would have yes. uh, they they should actually have the curriculum in schools and all because they don't know what they're doing there are so many trends going on right now which are really harmful like there is this so a stupid trend going on where they waste food and then the other person is making reel about it where they're not wow. wasting food Ooh. and it's then it's water then it, there are so many trends and they're just unknowingly yeah. doing it so it's i guess yeah. lack of knowledge and information knowledge. in this regard that's true yeah i agree with that and i think that's why like i'm also a co-founder of another venture where we only do workshops you know okay. with colleges schools you know corporates or right. anybody who's willing to start the journey but is lost okay because obviously it can be overwhelming it's not yeah. something you start like you know overnight and you're a pro at it it took me 7 years to at least regularly start doing what i'm doing now it's like habit building so you know that is one way like by doing workshops talks you know building communities you can actually you know bring in the gen z and if they do it they are the future right if they do it then then the future is sorted you know like they'll be helping more start. others yeah. yeah because once they get to know that sustainable sustainability is not just a term it's 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 going to its impact it its impact is uh, its impacts are on our lives health yes buildings around us in uh, like yeah. the plants everything not it's just not limited to the environment it's buildings it's health it's building. everything around us actually everything. so once you gain i guess once you gain knowledge about it and you are you just said that you have these workshops going on which is so nice to hear because i feel like if you're not teaching them at primary level you should have Then, something at you know higher level higher yes so uh you said uh, about uh, like you were talking about workshops and you know uh, teaching people about it teaching students about it so what will be your if you have to give few advice few tips for someone who is just started on their sustainable living journey what advice would you give them like they're complete beginner and they're just asking you what two or three things you just say straight off okay so um you know i wouldn't advise advise them but at least i'll request them to start with basics is okay. just 
if whatever food packets or milk packets are coming into your house just wash them and clean them and start like you know collecting them because there are a lot of recycling facilities doing that in our country which collect it you know that's basic like that's the least you can do maybe you know like just wash it and dry it you know that's one thing the second would be just carry your reusables with you all the time mm-hmm. because one of the major reasons of why disposables have you know like grown in production and usage is one was because of covid you know like hygiene problems and all but now we don't have covid anymore so we need to start understanding that even a paper plate which is lined with plastic is going to be a difficult thing to segregate you know it does not decompose or biodegrade so start carrying a fork and spoon or a straw on a and a bottle of water you know around that's the easiest we can do or a napkin for that matter so we don't have to use tissue paper you know and when you were in school you always carried a water bottle and a napkin that was like that was the thing which went with us everywhere you know so just start doing it even when you're growing as an adult the the third tip would be like take small steps okay so if if you decide that okay uh, july is starting and this july i'm going to like make one switch of you know using a bamboo brush from a plastic toothbrush then stick to that for the entire month okay it's like a 21 days to build a habit right so do that for an entire month so you won't be overwhelmed don't like that that one tip i give everybody is don't try to like make 10 changes in one month don't do that you will be like what am i doing you know i'm lost you know i just can't do it just one step at a time okay and then it'll be easier for you okay because you've already built one habit then the second and the third and then you just you know bring them all together in your lifestyle yes and composting that is something i want to tell everybody who can do you know i mean it's not that tough it can be tough i have failed many times when i started but you learn right as you go about it so you know learn about how you can compost your waste majority of your household waste will stop get going out of the house so yeah you, that's that's you these things have to start from basics yes yes and what you said earlier about we used to take water bottles and napkin it just it just hit me that they were actually teaching us right from the beginning you know that always you know carry your napkins with us it was actually mandatory for us to carry our handkerchiefs and our napkins with us yeah and uh, uh, water bottles our own water bottles and they were actually teaching us right from the beginning beginning and, but then i guess it kind of somehow uh, vanished as we do older and you were uh, talking about reusable bags and all it just uh strike me that now there is a trend going on which the first trend that i actually like they are using tote bag it's all for aesthetics and all but they are actually using yeah. cloth tote bag uh instead of so there are a lot of shopper tote bags cloth tote bag which i feel is good now they are using it just for fashion purpose but i guess they are also eco friendly so it all evens out yeah so, i think and even that like one more thing is like you know now paper bags came in and everyone's using paper bags and now cloth bags are in so everyone's using cloth bags but we also need to be more mindful do we have enough at home like i have like 7 to 10 cloth bags at home like for veggies for everything i in my bag i have like three to four extra if somebody doesn't have it i can give one you know so we also need to be mindful about how many are we holding you know just like you know now the th- new thing is okay i want tote bags and i'm going and buying tote bags you know like we also used to make tote bags from like fresh cloth and now we started using waste cloth to make tote bags because even to make tote bags from fresh cloth i'm using a resource you know so yeah but i'm okay. glad at least people are doing that you know otherwise all the time you see people asking for plastic bags and each vegetable in different plastic bags and then if you buy 10 vegetables yeah. you have 10 and like two big bags to carry that is such a to waste and there the plastic bag they're just lying at you in your yeah. house you can draw they're right. just lying there Yeah. We actually guilty as charged our family used to do that. We used to have a lot of plastic bags lined up in one of the drawers and slowly 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 but we did it was late but we did shift to the you know reusable bags which I felt was so good because the other plastic bags were just lying around. So Yeah. it was a shift. And if you like have many if you've collected many you can actually return it to the vegetable vendor so he doesn't have to buy new. he is not paying to get new bags and he can just reuse what you all like you know what you give him even that is a way to do it you don't have to discard all the plastic bags you know 
you can actually give it to the vendors and they can reuse it you know earlier so our nannies and all grandmoms used to make like bags out of like old sarees yeah, you know yeah. like kurta kurta all like bag, you know towels and all like thick bags and all they actually used to just stitch it up and you know we would use it and then it was not trendy or fashionable anymore and we stopped it and now it's back you know to use cloth bags i feel like a lot of things which uh, happened like in the past like way back they are coming back they are making a comeback but just because now somehow it has become you know aesthetic for this generation yeah. like tote bags you said now uh, making clothes out of you know small pieces of uh, clothes lying around that like which you can find at tailor shop or something like that we also have that uh, you know blanket which uh, yeah. i guess uh some uh which they make with uh you know base pieces of clothes now so now they're making yeah. a comeback not because they are good for the environment but they are trendy enough for this generation yeah. but yeah. i feel like whatever gets them to do things for the environment it's nice we should do it yeah like whatever sells your bo- boat you know like godri's like you're saying blankets they were made like ages ago yeah. you know when okay. like old old uh, sarees and everything was like you know stacked together with kapdas and it was done i'm what i'm wearing is actually this is from another kurta which store i've just like okay. taken it you know the kurta tore and i just put it on another piece of clothing you know i mean yes. our moms would always do that sari fat gaya you take the border and put it on a dress and convert it in like a ghagra or a dress yeah now it's just trending because that's the fad now so we've been doing it like a lot more but it was always there you know in our way of living like the indian way of living always had it so i so my last question to you would just be that uh, since you're an entrepreneur what one advice would you like to give to someone who is just starting on the journey same as yours okay first um uh, i would like you know if somebody is starting at some, like make or build or you know like bring things to the like your customers which are actually adding value to their lives okay like for example just because bamboo is in fashion or bamboo is the new in product okay like the bamboo toothbrushes which actually make some sense but there are people who are selling bamboo like tongue cleaners you know which actually like doesn't make sense it's not needed we also we already have copper steel you know tongue cleaners which last for like 20 30 years at a stretch like as a you know steel utensil would so i think if you're bringing uh, like sustainable products to your clients and opening a new business then be mindful of the things you're bringing just because it's in and you have to you have to run the business don't like just push the products in you know i would like yeah that's that's one thing i would like to tell So I guess that was all of the questions I had for you. Thank you so much for such uh, valuable insights and valuable information. And I hope more and more thousands and thousands of more people, you know, uh, get inspired by you. your accounts, your venture reaches thousands of more people, and they get inspired and join in hands to work together so that we can make a little bit of difference. And yeah. thank you so much. for taking time out of you thank you for having me i think i had a great time chatting with you thank you but just thank you so much for being here with us and i'm sure the audience this i hope this audio reaches a lot of people so people. that they get to know more about you about your venture thank yes. you so much